Hey lovely people, welcome back to Companion Planting, part two. The mere mention of the term companion planting can make some agricultural nostrils flare in disdain. because they consider it as pure hype. And some of the suggested companions out there may be. However, if you totally poo-poo companion planting, you may have to backtrack a little bit because more and more, there are studies being done by reputable institutions showing its effectiveness. As I stated and outlined in part one, uh, where I talked about the, the ancient companion planting of the Three Sisters Guild developed by the Native Americans. This part two is going to cover just one thing. Which vegetables are companion plants with each other? Only vegetables. I'm basically dividing this video into five parts. The first one is spacing. The second is bad neighbors. The third are good neighbors. The fourth are cozy neighbors. And the fifth is confusing the enemy. So number one, spacing the friends and the foes. So in terms of, of spacing, we have to kind of work off of what has been done um, and studied and observed with in-ground planting. So as a general rule, if you have a friend to friends, to vegetable friends today, then there are a couple of options. They might be interplanted, often called intercropping, and that's where uh, you've got your little tomato and then you're planting its companion like right there, right under it, right next to it. So that's interplanting. The other general rule of thumb though for in-ground planting in the garden is that you plant the friends within two or three rows of each other or as I said right next to each other nice and cozy so now we have to kind of narrow that since we're talking strictly about containers in containers it's really just one of two things when we're talking about the friends they're either going to be in the same container nice and cozy or they're going to be in their own container but in close proximity for the foes the general rule of thumb with in-ground planting is to keep them three to four or more rows apart that's usually not an issue with containers but there are a few that we're going to talk about next on to number two bad neighbors do not plant side by side. Many of the old don't do combinations in companion planting in ground just don't apply to containers because obviously they don't share the same soil. For example, tomatoes. Tomatoes and mature dill plants, the herb dill, do not do well together. While a young dill plant enhances the growth and the health of a tomato plant, a mature dill plant does the opposite. It inhibits its growth and the fruit production. So you don't want a mature dill plant right next to tomatoes. That doesn't apply in that, in that example in container planting because you can have a mature dill plant in its container right next to a tomato plant in its container. However, in container planting, there are three combinations that I have uncovered so far that really you should not even have as neighbors. So these are the bad neighbors for companion planting. Number one, tomatoes near potatoes. It is not a good idea to place these next to each other because tomatoes near potatoes can make the potatoes more susceptible to potato blight. Number two, cucumbers near potatoes. 
This isn't so much for the benefit of the cucumber, but rather for the potatoes. Cucumbers planted next to potatoes, when the potatoes are maturing and almost ready, they, the cucumbers can at that point encourage potato blight and it can wipe out your entire potato crop. And the last one is cucumbers near melons. It's long been thought by gardeners that you should not plant cucumbers next to melons or pumpkins because they can cross-pollinate and it will affect the flavor of the fruit. Well, while this seems logical, it's just not true. Cucumbers and melons are from a completely different subspecies and they cannot crossbreed. That being said, it's still not a wise idea to plant cucumbers next to melons and other gourds in a small garden. And the reason being is because these plants have very similar pest enemies. So planting them by each other will draw all those pests in, basically creating like a veggie banquet. And the effect on your cucumbers will be that you will have a very difficult season trying to get them to mature and produce. I speak from experience on this one. There was one year that I decided I would put my cucumbers and a few of the cantaloupes in containers on the same uh, gutter and they did not do well at all. My other melons did great. I even got a few melons on that trellis, but the cucumbers... <clears throat> Number three, friendly neighbors. Do plant them side by side. Now, as I said with container planting, except for those few exceptions I just mentioned, you can plant any vegetable in its own container next to any other vegetable in its own container. But I have found that there are a few that do well just being planted right side by side in separate containers. So let's talk about those. There are five. Number one, celery. Celery is known for repelling white cabbage moths. So it is of the benefit to plant celery near the following vegetables. Cabbage, bush beans, cauliflower, cucumbers, tomatoes, and leeks. While potatoes and tomatoes don't get along and potatoes and cucumbers is not a good idea, there are a group of vegetables that you can plant next to your potatoes and those are beans. The beans repel the Colorado potato beetle and guess what? The potatoes repel the Mexican bean beetle. So those are two very, very friendly companions. Number three, eggplant with potatoes. Now, eggplant actually acts as what we call a trap crop for the Colorado potato beetle. So if you plant an eggplant next or intermingled in your buckets of potatoes, you might not expect to be able to harvest a lot of those eggplants because if you have potato beetles, they are going to be drawn to that eggplant and pretty much eat it up. Next up, number four, bulbing onions. The sulfur compounds in all alliums produces an odor that those pests do not like. Onions repel a plethora of pests, ants, aphids, flea beetles, carrot flies, and mosquitoes. So bulbing onions are good to put in con their own containers mixed in with any other vegetables in your container garden. For example, let's say you've got lettuce in a container. If you put some onions 
uh, in a container next to it, they actually will repel the aphids. But a big thing here, if you are in ground planting, and I mention this because even though I don't do the traditional garden bed planting anymore, I still have raised beds for a few things like asparagus and strawberries and um, onions. So you do not want to put any kind of allium next to or near beans, peas, or asparagus. And number five, garlic bulbs. As you can imagine, just like the onions, the garlic, the sulfur compounds in garlic, as we all know, gives off an odor that pesky insects do not like. Some of the pests that garlic repels are the cabbage looper, white flies, the carrot rust fly, root maggots, and the peach tree borer. Again, you can plant your garlic bulbs in their own container and place it anywhere mixed in with other vegetables. In ground planting though, again, the two things you need to avoid are planting garlic near peas and beans. Okay, we've talked about spacing, we've talked about bad neighbors, not planting them side by side. We've talked about good neighbors, planting them side by side, but in their own containers. Now it's time to talk about the cozy neighbors. You know, those that like to be right up under each other. When thinking about planting two vegetables in one container, it's paramount that you think about three things. How fast they mature, uh, the depth of their roots, and the nutritional pull on the container or potting mix that they are planted in. Generally speaking, the smaller fast producing vegetables can be interplanted with the larger, slower producing vegetables. And in my research and experience in container growing, I've really only found four that work well by being really cozy with each other. So let's talk about those four vegetables. Number one, radishes. These little crunchy guys guard against pests such as carrot rust flies and cucumber beetles. Now in planting them along with a larger, slower growing vegetable in a container, you wouldn't want to overload the bucket with radishes. Uh, I would suggest like towards the front of the bucket, you just gently sprinkle a few radish seeds. There's no way that you can drop one at a time. They are so tiny. But as they grow, just thin them out and leave about five, six in there to mature. Plant radishes with beets, broccoli, cucumbers, melons, peas, pole beans, spinach, tomatoes, and carrots. Two things to note when you're planting radishes and carrots together in a container. First, your radishes are going to mature first and you'll be harvesting them, giving them plenty of space for the carrots to grow and get fatter. The second thing is that any bucket that you're going to add some radishes to, uh, whether it's with carrots or whether it's with pole beans, you really need to fill the bucket, fill the container using the fill method number two. I actually did a video on the two methods of filling last year that you can find in my playlist and I'll try to remember to include it down in the description box. In addition to the video on my blog, FarmerBrownsParadise.com, I have a very, very detailed, lengthy article on uh, the basic guidelines for the rain gutter garden system and the kiddie pool garden system where I talk about the mix, the containers, um, and the filling methods. So if you prefer to have written instructions um, on that method number two, you can find it 
in that blog article. The next cozy neighbor that you can consider planting with larger vegetables are the greens. When you do this, when you intercrop planting greens in with a bucket of a larger vegetable, basically what you're doing is creating a living mulch. Most greens are considered a cool season crop, but if they have a little shade, you can extend the season a little bit longer. Um, even into the summer or the early parts of the summer. So lettuce planting, for example, planting lettuce with tomatoes, the tomatoes will shade it and give it a little bit of an extension of life. And lettuce goes well with any of the tomato family, the tomatoes, peppers, and eggplants. I do want to point out here though, especially about the tomatoes. When you transplant your tomatoes into the bucket, you need to immediately, right then, while you're planting, after you've watered it in, mulch on the top. I like to use Easy Straw. I've shown that in several of my videos. But the purpose of the mulch, especially with tomatoes, is to prevent or try to prevent soil-borne diseases. Tomatoes are notorious for getting soil-borne fungi. What happens is maybe you haven't pruned up the leaves a bit and a leaf will touch that soil and there you go. Or you'll get soil splash up on the leaves and the stem during a heavy rain or heaven forbid improper watering. So mulching is extremely important. Okay well if you're going to want to plant lettuce under your tomatoes that you've got straw there you need to make sure you've already seed started that lettuce so it's actually transplants you can't just throw the seeds down there and expect them to grow on top of the mulch it won't happen and the second caveat i will say is that if you spray for bugs using pure neem like i do um, you would not want to plant your greens that you want to eat as a living mulch underneath unless you protect them in some way because it's not because the neem is harmful to, to ingest but it tastes very very bitter and it is next to impossible no matter how much you wash it to try to get that bitter flavor off now this same concept of planting greens as a living mulch works with nearly all the greens spinach lettuce muscaline arugula all of these can work as a living mulch with the tomato family now you can also interplant your greens with the coal crops cabbage cauliflower broccoli and brussels sprouts you'll be harvesting those fast producing greens long before the other plants crowd them out and shade them Number three on the cozy partner list are green onions and onion chives. Now we've already talked about the benefit of alliums when we were talking about planting the onion bulbs um, as in their own containers as neighbors. So you've got the same benefits with green onions and onion chives. But again, in this cozy membership category here, you're planting with the exception of radishes, you are planting transplants. You don't need to just throw onion seeds and expect them to grow in the container. You need to use transplants. Now, if you're on the ball and you've started many, many days ahead of time and started your green onion seeds or your green onion chives, then you're good to go when it's time to transplant out but I'm not always in that on the ball category so I'll tell you some springs what I do I buy onion sets I'm sure most of you know what they are you've seen them the little bundles of they almost look like dead green onions and they're wrapped up in twine I buy those onion sets and I use them for green onions onion sets actually 
have gone through their first year of growth. And if you plant onion sets expecting to get bulbs, you're, you're going to be disappointed because onions are biennial, meaning that after the first year of growth, the second year they are going to quickly go into survival mode and you're going to see on the stalks up top them start to flower and seed. That's survival mode. So when you plant onion sets, you just need to plant them expecting to use them like green onions. The beauty of using onion sets, whether you've seed started them yourself or you have bought them, is that they mature in three to four weeks ready to harvest. If you just want to eat the greens, you can go out in your garden and just snip off some of the greens. If you want the whole little plant, including the tiny little white bulby part, like the whole green onion, what you can do is harvest it, pluck it out. But when you do that, take some of the extra onion sets and replant them right there. And in another three or four weeks, you'll have more green onions. I always buy extra onion sets uh, and store them in a heavy brown paper bag and put them in the refrigerator and they'll stay good for many, many months. If you're making cozy partnerships with green onions and another vegetable, I would suggest maybe five, six, something like that toward the front of the bucket with the larger, slower maturing vegetable at the back. Now onion chives can get pretty large if you don't harvest them. So a small transplant in the front of the bucket, harvest it frequently. Um, and make sure you harvest before it goes to seed because then it doesn't taste very good. You can plant green onions and chives with beets, cabbage, carrots, parsnips, leeks, kale, tomatoes. By the way, chives are said to improve the flavor planted with tomatoes, strawberries, kohlrabi. When you plant it with eggplant, it can protect against ants. And are you ready for this one, guys? I'm certainly going to test this one out. When you plant chives, supposedly, with squash, it deters the squash vine borer. You can bet your bottom dollar I am going to be experimenting with that this year. I did a whole video last year on those squash vine borer boogers. And lastly, this may be one of those myths, but it's worth a try. Chives planted with cucumbers. It says it may prevent powdery mildew be worth experimenting to see. And remember again, onions are a foe to beans, peas, lettuce, and asparagus. So now that we're talking about cozy and planting in the same container, you would not want to do that. Keep them apart. And rounding out number four of cozy partnerships are garlic chives. Just like garlic and the alliums, we all know that they are very stinky plants and they deter many things. Garlic chives, however, will deter Japanese beetles and cabbage moth flies. When I planted my climbing roses down on our arches that are in between our two big garden beds, I planted garlic chives. They're wild garlic chives and they get really, really tall. Of course, I don't. Uh, cut them down. I don't really use them. I just leave them there because they deter the Japanese beetles and the Japanese beetles love the roses and I'm telling you guys that really really did work. So I love the garlic chives. I have, I have intercropped, interplanted garlic chives with many of the vegetables uh, in containers before. So some vegetables that would be good to plant the garlic chives with are tomatoes, um, eggplant and the, the coal crops again. Remember though, you do not want to interplant in the same container 
uh, garlic chives with peas, beans, and other legumes. And the last little section here is on confusing the enemy. You know, companion planting doesn't mean that you have to have a mixed up and messy looking garden. In addition though, it doesn't guarantee that intercropping certain plants are going to work in your favor. There is a science to all of this, which can lead to a pretty intricate dance for the gardener. One of the true beauties of companion planting is confusing the enemy, the garden pests. So in addition to the spacing and keeping bad neighbors apart, good neighbors together, and cozy neighbors even closer together, we want to confuse the enemy. How do we do this? Well, we kind of have to get our mindset away from the traditional garden plan layout where you've got all your vegetables lined up in a row, all of one type lined up in a row. Even in container planting with the way um, our systems are, we use mostly gutters. So we've got nine buckets on a gutter. One way to confuse the enemy, especially since I've already said to you that one vegetable in its container be, can be right next to a totally different vegetable in its container and there shouldn't be a problem except for those few that I mentioned. Remember back, tomatoes with potatoes, no, no. Cucumbers with potatoes, no, no. And cucumbers with melons, no, no. But everything else you can put and mix and match. So that is one way to confuse the enemy. For example, let's say I've got one gutter full of uh, peppers and I've got another gutter full of bush beans. Instead of keeping them separated, take four of your bush beans and put them in between your five pepper plants and then take those other four pepper plants and on that other rail maybe intermix them with the other bush beans. Another example, I have gutters that have long trellises for all the climbing vegetables that we grow. You can intermix there too. Let's say you want to mix uh, musk melons with legumes. Okay, um, we grow black eyed peas. That would be easy enough to bucket of melon, bucket of black eyed peas, um, three or four buckets of melons, another bucket of black eyed peas, however you wanted to mix it up. Same thing with the trellises that we do uh, for our cucumbers. I grow pole beans intermixed in between the cucumbers. Parts three and four on the herbs and the flowers is really going to blow it open for you if you're not real familiar with companion planting because there are so many herbs and so many flowers that have so many functions, whether it's a trap crop for the bad bugs, whether it's uh, the smell just itself deters them and repels them, or, uh, attracting the beneficial insects, which is equally as important in your garden. You know, we hear people saying a lot now, the bees just aren't there, I'm not seeing this or that. Well, are you planting things that draw the beneficials in, the bees, the hoverflies, the predatory wasps? All of that's important to create this beautiful microclimate garden of biodiversity. So in this mixing up, this confusing the enemy section, we're talking about just the vegetables, but you're gonna find out in parts three and four how to mix in those herbs and those flowers with certain vegetables to confuse the enemy even further. It takes a bit of planning to make sure you're not creating neighbors that don't serve each other well, but it's just a matter of studying and mapping it out. And that is the reason that I've decided to create the part five video series where I'm going to show you exactly how I do that layout process 
and show you what I plant where and why I plant certain things with it. Where am I uh, putting additional flowers or herbs that will draw beneficial insects. All of that I'm going to cover in part five and it will also be in my blog article. In closing, purists will always demand scientific proof, but the lack of study doesn't prove anything. My advice, experiment in your garden. Trust your observations and experiences. And most importantly, record, record, record what you do, what you observe, what you experience in a garden journal, preserving it not only for yourself, but for future gardeners. Adopt my motto from a quote from another Janet. There are no gardening mistakes, only experiments. Bye and have a good one. Oh, we ain't got a barrel of money. Maybe we're ragged and funny, but we'll travel the road, sharing our load side by side.